All right, and welcome to Now in Android, episode number 22. Tons of things going on. 11 weeks in Android is kicking in big time. I think we named it wrong. It should be called a thousand years of Android content all stuffed into 11 weeks. So in the meantime, let's see what's going on. First of all, Android 11 Beta 2 launched. This is an important release because this is the platform stability milestone. This is a new thing as of Android 11, and it means that the APIs and the behaviors will not change after this. So if you have not gotten around to testing your application yet, this is a really good time to do so, to make sure that your application behaves as you want it to before we go to who final release and uh, get that out there. Next, Android X, couple of things going on. First of all, there were tons of releases because there are always tons of releases every couple of weeks. Most of these are bug fix releases or intermediate releases somewhere between alpha and final release. But I wanted to call your attention to a specific one, which is Work Manager 2.4. Besides the bug fixes that are also in there, it also has new support for Rx Java 3 and a new work query API so you can find out what's up with your work info objects, as well as diagnostic info to give you metrics on how things have been going with the jobs that you've been scheduling so far. Also, huge news, Android X is now available on GitHub, sort of. So this is a long-standing request from you. I remember people talking about it at Android Developer Summit, I don't know, a couple of years ago at least. The problem is we use completely different infrastructure internally. This is like a detail you do not have to care about, right? But it does mean that it is very difficult. We can't just say, sure, GitHub, let's put it out there. Because for various reasons you shouldn't care about, we have to use different infrastructure. So that makes it tricky to then funnel GitHub content there. But it's important. We know that you are familiar with that GitHub flow and not necessarily with the AOSP plus the Garrett. Uh, flow that we have otherwise. So piece by piece, we are trying to get the pieces out there. For now, baby steps, we have Room and Work Manager available uh, for you to submit patches on GitHub. So see how that goes. Tons of articles and videos. As I said, the 11 week content is kind of huge, right? There's tons of those. I'm not gonna call out everything that we put out there. Instead, I will refer to uh, the links in the 11 weeks for you to go get more information on those specific things, but I wanna point you to some other things that came out at the same time. First of all, there's a new video playlist, a new show that Dan Galpin has been working on called The Game Show, where he talks about and focuses specifically on content for game developers. He launched a couple of episodes into that show recently. The first is Introducing Android Performance Tuner. Talks about how to get performance metrics which you can then auto upload into the dashboard. You can see that information in Android Vitals in your Play Console. Also, Play Asset Delivery is about delivering the right assets at the right time to your application. So check out those two shows and check out the playlist in general. There will be more content in the future, so keep an eye out for that. Building Apps for Work Profiles is a video that came out from Asir Samak. Uh, talking about how to make sure that your app behaves correctly on work profiles. If you think your application is useful in the context of enterprise and people will use it in work profiles, then maybe you'd be good to use best practices for work profile development uh, and ensure that that application does work well in that context. So check out the video for some tips on that. All right, next, Work Manager. So I think you are familiar and I'm familiar with Work Manager as a great way to schedule deferred work, things that you want to happen sometime in the future under certain constraints, battery, bandwidth, whatever it is, right? But there is new functionality work manager now to also allow you to run long running jobs that really need to start now. Ben Weiss has posted a new article on uh, doing exactly that, scheduling these long running tasks that need to execute immediately. So check out that article for more information on how to do that. So IOSCED I have talked about in previous episodes. Uh, this is an application that we write to help users, to help attendees schedule talks at events like Google I.O. and Android Developer Summit. And recently we posted the source code for the most recent version of that. Uh, so IOSCED, check that out, learn about best practices for doing various things. One of those best practices is we have migrated from using Dagger for dependency injection to using Hilt. And ha uh, Jose Alcerica posted an article about how we did that, how we migrated to Hilt, and also uh, the savings that we saw. Spoiler alert, they deleted 2,000 lines and added only 500 of them back in the conversion to Hilt. And it wasn't just by making all of those lines longer. 
so I will leave the details to the article because that's what the article is there for. Um, so see the details there. Live data and coroutines was a talk that Jose Alcerica, again, gave with Yeet Boyar at Android Developer Summit last year. So it talked about how to combine these things, how to do uh, this asynchronous programming stuff, coroutines and flow and live data. Uh, great talk. Put it in article form now if you are not, if you don't prefer to get your content through videos, you can now consume this content through three articles. Again, long talk, therefore a three-parter article. So go ahead and schedule some time, block some time off and read those in sequence. Um, or maybe you could use coroutines to actually uh, uh, deliver them asynchronously to you instead. Uh, next, a uh, bunch of training stuff came out. So there's a new course. This is kind of huge, Android Basics in Kotlin. We've had an Android Basics course for a while, but it was in the Java programming language, and it uses some uh, some approaches that we may have a, a, a better way of doing things for nowadays. Um, so this is for people that don't even necessarily have software development experience to begin with. So they can learn software development Android development and Kotlin all at the same time. So check out that course. Also, we launched a couple of pathways uh, around Kotlin. One pathway is around coroutines. So there are articles and code labs to help you understand how to use coroutines in your applications. And we also po uh, posted another pathway called Kotlin for Java developers. So let's say you're a Java developer now, you want to know how to do Kotlin development or how to do more Kotlin developer uh, development or how to integrate uh, that Kotlin code with the rest of your code that is still in the Java programming language. So this pathway is specifically around Kotlin and Java interoperability as well as migration from Java to Kotlin. Uh, there is an AMA, there's a Reddit AMA happening in the past, right? By the time you see this video, I think by the time this is posted, the AMA will be over. However, all of the content from the questions and the answers that the team was able to provide is on the AMA site. Um, so check out the link, go to the AMA, see the, uh, see the content there. Um, hopefully you'll be in time to participate in the next one. We're running three AMAs during the 11 weeks in Android. This is the second one. There's a third one coming up later in the series. It's all on the 11 week site, so you can check it out there. Uh, 11 weeks of Android, speaking of 11 weeks, um, there were a few of those that happened since the last episode of Now in Android. Week four was Android 11 compatibility. And in this week, we gave you articles and videos and information about how to make sure that your application is compatible with the latest uh, release and behaviors and APIs, including the new resource loading API in Android 11, uh, and tools to make sure that you are maintaining compatibility and doing the right thing with your application. So check out the wrap-up blog for uh, pointers, the links to all the content there for the videos and the articles, and also check out the video playlist. The next week after that was week five, which is languages. So we gave information on Kotlin, on C++, and on the Java programming language. There were videos and articles on Kotlin features like coroutines. Uh, there was a video and article on supporting newer language features in the Java programming language. And there was information about improvements that we've uh, introduced for C++ developers. Again, check out the wrap-up blog for the links to that content, as well as the video playlist that we have on the uh, Android Developers channel on YouTube. And the week after that, week six, this is Android Jetpack, which is huge. Jetpack itself is huge. So many libraries, so much going on. And that was replicated with the content that we posted as well. Um, so lots and lots of things to, to check out there. There were articles, there were videos, there were code labs, everything from the paging three rewrite um, to uh, a lot of stuff about Hilt, um, Camera X, there were new features in the navigation library, a video around that. Again, check out the wrap up blog and also the video playlist uh, to get links to all that content. And then week seven came out uh, after that, which is this week uh, when I am recording and hopefully when you are seeing this. And this is about Android developer tools, um, articles and videos on how to use the tools most effectively. Uh, if you want to know the content as it comes out, since that wrap-up blog is not yet available, check out the Android dev handle on Twitter uh, and the hashtag 11 weeks of Android, and then you will see the content as it is posted live um, throughout the week. This is true not just for the tools week, but for all the weeks as we uh, go through this exercise. And next week, we're going into app distribution, monetization, because it turns out sometimes it's nice to make money from the effort that you put into your application. Android 11 meetups continue to happen all over the world. In fact, uh, this week, tomorrow on Thursday, uh, I'm giving a talk along with uh, Florina at an event that is hosted at Google Developer Group in, let's see, Chicago, two places in New York, two to three places in Argentina, as well as Mexico. 
My geography knowledge is horrible. I'm pretty sure these places are not near each other at all. This is not like a GDG location. It is a GDG hemisphere. It's kind of fantastic that in this time of need, we are able to gather in such a wide way online uh, and participate in these events together. So I'm looking forward to that. I would suggest you check out the events that are happening in your area or maybe just in your time zone anywhere in that hemisphere. Uh, so good luck with that. These are happening all throughout the summer. Um, so there's a link where you can find out what's going on when. And finally, there were a couple of new ADB podcast episodes posted. Uh, ADB 144 compilers, where Tor and I talk with Mads Ayer. Uh, from the Android Studio compiler team. We talked about R8 and D8 optimizations. We talked about Kotlin compiler front and back end. And we also talked about the new Kotlin symbol processor. ADB 145, the next episode, the last one that went out there was Grab That Dagger by the Hilt. Uh, Boma and I talked with uh, Danny Santiago and Eric Chang, who work on the Hilt library, which is, of course, uh, the recommended approach for dependency injection on Android. So check out both of those podcasts. Check out the rest of the content that I talked about. Spend some time, learn the stuff. As usual, all of the links to everything that I mentioned are on the article. So check out the Now in Android number 22 article uh, for that detail. And if you like the video, go ahead and like and share and subscribe to the Android Developers channel on YouTube. Thanks.